this weekend, evangelist Evan Hood and his wife, uh, Sister Stephanie Hood, we honor them. They preached on Friday night and then were with us in our Spanish service today. And God did a tremendous thing. They have uh, evangelized and traveled for the last number of years. And good reports coming in from all over, everywhere it seems they go, that I talk to pastors again and again. They say that God has greatly anointed this couple. And we are delighted they're here. So for the first time at the Rock Church this weekend, we are delighted. Brother Evan Hood, we're glad you're here. Would you welcome the man of God tonight? God bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, I know we worship him a bunch, but he's worthy of all the praise. Come on, on a Sunday night, we praise and we glorify you, Jesus. You are indescribable, God. And I'll use every word that I've got to praise you and to glorify you. Come on, you're infinite, you're eternal, you're everything, Jesus. We praise you. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody give him a shout of victory and a shout of triumph. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I want to say what an honor it is to be in the house of the Lord with you all tonight. Thankful for what God did on Friday and again in Spanish service. And I believe God's got more for us here tonight. In Jesus' name, I want to give honor to your pastor and to his family. Uh, I've had the privilege of knowing the Youngs since I was real young and uh, first getting to church. And I want to say I appreciate your ministry and uh, we love your pastor. Amen. Anybody love your pastor? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is a, a unique honor for me here today because 16 years ago, I walked into a crazy church on Broadway in Spokane, Washington, suicidal, messed up from a drug home. And there was this crazy guy preaching behind the pulpit and going wild. And I thought, why is this dude in a suit yelling at me? Uh, that was my pastor, Pastor Rick Mayo. And uh, 16 years have gone by. It's been wonderful. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I was baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And as many of you know, he came from the Rock Church in Sacramento. And I, I know that Bishop's not here, but Sister Wilson, I honor you here tonight. You know, if it wasn't for your husband and yourself and the rest of the Rock Church, I wouldn't be here tonight. So I give you great and double honor in Jesus' name. Without any further delay, uh, Judges chapter 15 and uh, verse number 14. If you like preaching in the house of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the room and the basket. My wife and I have been enjoying that. Probably going to gain 20, 20 or 25 pounds in Jesus' name. And then we'll hopefully lose it in the next little while. Judges 15. And verse number 14, the Bible says this, and when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found the new job on the donkey and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Samson said with the job on of a donkey, heaps upon heaps with the job of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. And it came to pass that when he made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore of thirst and called on the name of the Lord. And said, Thou hast given this great deliverance in the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof Enhakor, which is in Lehi, unto this day. Bible lets us know that Samson picked up a jawbone and laid the Philistines out. And he threw it away and cried out to God and said, Will I die for thirst? And the Bible says God claimed a hollow place that was in the jaw. And 
water came out and he was revived. And I want to preach to us for a few moments on this subject. When the weapon becomes the well. When the weapon becomes the well. Would you set your Bibles down? Let's pray all across this building. Throw your hands in the air. Lift up your voice. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you, God. We're asking that you would do mighty things. Help revive some folk in the house of God and bless us to hear your word and give us hearts to respond to your word in the wonderful name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise one more time and a hand clap. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout over the Lord with a voice of triumph. Take your neighbor's hand, tell them God bless you. You can be seated in the house of God. When the weapon becomes well, when I first got saved, one of my favorite stories quickly became the story of Samson. It was probably, in my opinion, one of, if not the most unique stories in the Bible. Samson was one of three men in the Bible who had their births announced by angel. One was John the Baptist, the other was Jesus Christ, and finally there was Samson. However, most of the important men and women in the Bible came without fanfare, and they came from humble beginnings. Samson's birth was prophesied and announced by this angel because Samson was born with a specific purpose. Samson's parents were given very specific instructions on, on, on how they were to raise their son because the, the, the special purpose that God, that God had on his life. He was to carry the vow of Nazarite all the days of his life. The word Nazarite simply means to be consecrated or separated. There were three main requirements that a Nazarite had to maintain if he wanted to keep his vow intact. Anybody who took a Nazarite vow was commanded to abstain from wine or any derivative of the grapevine. Number two, they were not allowed to become ritually impure by coming in contact with graves or corpses. And we could probably talk about that all day, that when God has his hand on your life and God has a special purpose for your life, there's just some things that we have to abstain from and some things that we shouldn't be around and some things that we just should not touch. Amen. And finally, number three, he was commanded to refrain from cutting his hair, but instead he was told to let the locks of his hair grow. Samson was born to be separate. He was born to be anointed. He was born to be different. He was born to be used of God. And he was born to be strong. Samson is an Old Testament typology of a New Testament believer. How be it we might have been born into a bloodline that was contaminated and busted because of the failures of Adam and Eve. And though you might have been born into a family that had mess ups and mistakes, I want you to know that when you were born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, you were born again with a special and a unique power and anointing upon your life. Anybody been born again and knew uh, that what I was not able to overcome, uh, I'm now able to overcome it. Uh, what I was not strong enough uh, to fight against now, uh, that I've been born again uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, i got power, overcoming power. Uh, any overcomers uh, that have been baptized in his name, uh, that got strength uh, from the almighty power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God Shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every individual has the same opportunity when you're born again to have power to overcome. There is not one individual that has less anointing and less power. That same Holy Ghost that poured out in Acts chapter 
the two upon the apostles and the 120 in the upper room is that same spirit that is in this building here tonight. And if you're here and you've not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to know tonight is your night. might have walked in with all sorts of addictions and compulsions and issues. You might have mommy issues and daddy issues, but I want you to know that if you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you have a strength and a power to overcome all your past and overcome all your family's past. I wish I had somebody that was been there, done that, and believes God that he's able. Somebody shout and give him praise. Samson received a special power from God. He had a strength that astonished everybody around him. The Bible hints that nobody but his parents and himself understood why he was so strong. Even his downfall with Delilah that we don't have time to get into here tonight proves that she did not know where his strength came from. She even asked him, what is the secret to your strength? Because when God does something in somebody's life, when you're born again, you got a strength that other people don't understand. You can smile through the bankruptcy and have joy in your heart. And you can still live a godly, overcoming life. And everybody else just lost their mind and lost their marriage and lost everything. And they don't know what's going on. And yet through the power of the Holy Ghost, they don't understand it. But you show up to work and you show up to your campus with a smile on your face. Because you just came from church the day before. And you got a power from God that got you through when nothing else would. You've got a strength that carry. Come on, I'm preaching some Holy Ghost to apostolic people that understand what it is. The world might be going upside down. Everything might be falling apart. But all is well in Jesus. And it's well with my soul. And everything externally might bust and might break. But as long as I got Jesus, I'll be okay. As long as I got the Holy Ghost, ain't nobody. And no devil in hell ever gonna stop a, a saint of the most high God. Oh, somebody shout and give him praise if you're thankful for that power. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I do not believe that he was strong at all times. I might be in the minority. I don't believe he hit the gym. Probably didn't look as buff as your pastor. Probably looked a little scrawny like me. And when people saw it, they did not see strength. And when people see you, they won't see strength. But if they can see the Holy Ghost inside you, there is a lion roaring on the inside. There is something that is moving on the inside. That, that's why the Bible says, greater is he that is within you. A lot of people misquote that and say, greater are you. I, I got good news and I got bad news. Uh, the good news is, greater is he that is within you. Uh, you may not be greater than everything you're facing. And you may not be greater than everything around you. Uh, but you got a power on the inside. That's more powerful than anything on the outside. So it does not matter what external pressures there are. You got an internal pressure called the Holy Ghost. Judges 13 and 25, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord began to move on him at times. Judges 14 and 19, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Judges 15 and 14, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Because there is a power that comes upon an individual that lets the Spirit of God come upon them. There is something that, that resonates and lays on an individual when they let the Spirit of God rest in their life. The Bible lets us know that he performed many feats through the power of God. The Bible says that he walked right up and ripped the gates off 
of an enemy wall. Amen. And anything that was standing in front of him, when he had the power of God moving on him, he was able to tear it out of the way. That's why the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That is not a defensive scripture. That is an offensive scripture. That means the saints of God are walking right up to the gates and saying, I refuse anything that stops me. I refuse anything that through the power of God, you can walk right up to every wall that's standing in your way, and you can begin to tear it out of the way. Through the power of God, you can worship God in the prison cell, and all the doors begin to swing wide open, and the foundation of what held you back and held you down begins to shake, tremble, and break through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that he smote a lion with his bare hands. I wouldn't fight a lion with a weapon, let alone with my bare hands. But you know what? He knew this lion is roaring against me. And this thing, if I keep it around, it will destroy me one day. But right now, I feel something. You can't always wait to feel something, but sometimes you've got to realize I feel something right now. You, you just got to act on what you feel in moments. I know it's not always right to act on what you feel, but I want to tell you in the house of God, there's nothing wrong with acting on what you feel. If you feel like lifting your hand, go ahead. If you feel the Spirit of God moving on you and you've been facing some things and fighting some things, Samson said, with my bare hands, I don't have anything at my disposal, but I'm going to lay hands on this lion in Jesus' name. There's some folks, you need to go home and lay hands on your wallet, lay hands on your bank account, lay hands, you got to lay hands on the things you're facing that are roaring against you, might be a doctor's report, might be... Come on, you might have to lay hands on your spouse and pray them through in Jesus' name and say, I'm tired of walking by this day in and day out. I'm tired of struggling with this day in and day out. And through the power of Jesus Christ, I'm not accepting any more things roaring in my world. Somebody right now, throw your hands up and say, Jesus, I'm going to lay hands on this. I'm not facing this no more. I'm fighting this. I want it to be dead. I want it to be ripped in half. I'm ready for it to be over. Lift your hands and pray all across the building. Come on, you got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. I know the devil's roaring like a lion. He's looking about seeking whom he may devour. But we got the lion of the tribe of Judah and he can he can outfight. He can outroar. He can outdo everything the enemy does. Somebody lift up your hands. And let's pray. Come on, somebody pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, I don't know what you're facing. Somebody just got a word from God. You need to say, you know what, I refuse this. I don't accept this. I'm going to fight it now. I'm not waiting till later. I'm not waiting till it grows up. I'm going to just lay hands on it. I'm not waiting till I'm in crisis. I'm not waiting until I can't fight it off. I'm just going to say, in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, somebody worship him. These signs shall follow them that believe in his name. Come on, the Bible says they'll cast out devils. You want to tell everything you're facing. You got to go. It's through the power of God. The Samson started from all these people. The Bible says he got to 300 foxes. The Bible says in the book of the Song of Psalms, it is the little fox that spoiled life. In other words, one little fox can ruin everything. Samson was so sick of what the enemy had done in his life. He said, you know, foxes are slight creatures. Jesus called Herod a fox. He just said, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to be persistent enough about this. I'm not just going to get one. I'm not just going to get two. I'm a witness. Listen, there's some folks got to get persistent about victory. 
They're going to just get so sick and tired of everything else they're bringing in their life. And every time they come by, they just destroy this and destroy that. There's some folks that say, you know what? I may not get victory right now, but I'll tell you what. I'll be more persistent about victory than you are about defeating me. I'll be more persistent about overcoming And he lit their tails on fire. And he set them loose. You know what we need in Apostolic Church? A 300 fox revival. There's too many folks giving up on the 299 fox. Well, I prayed 299 times and nothing happened. Where's your persistence at? You got the Holy Ghost. Where
But you gotta remember, this is the same Samson that ripped the gates off the walls, burned down their fields, killed their nephews, killed their nieces, killed their brothers, killed their sisters. They got, they got a bone to pick with Samson. And they're telling Samson, you know what we're gonna do to you? Everything you did to us in your spiritual moment. Everything you did when you were stronger. You're gonna get everything you brought out, we're gonna bring it back to you. There's some folks living in that right now. And the Bible says they weren't just talking on him. They were shouting at him. Anybody ever felt like all of hell has been shouting in your world? Anybody ever felt huh, like all of hell has been yelling in your ear? Huh? I'm already feeling locked up. I'm already feeling bound. Huh? And now you got to tell me huh, I'm going to go bankrupt and I'm going to get sick and my family's going to walk out. Everything's gonna go wrong. You're gonna tell me. But I just want to help somebody out. No weapon formed against you. It might be formed. It might be sound. It might. Be. But that does not mean that it's gonna work. That does not mean that it's gonna accomplish anything. That does not mean that the devil wins. Because we know we will. Hey, no. yeah. And the Bible says they shouted and sang. But I want you to know God did something too. Because God's not content with all the hell screaming in your ear. Tell them what they're going to do to you. Tell them how they're going to destroy you. The Bible says for the first time in Samson's life, the Spirit of the Lord just moved a little bit on him. Just kind of. No, this attack was unprecedented. And God was not about to let an unprecedented attack from the enemy just be a normal move of God. I want somebody to know before you leave this building tonight, God says, I won't just move a little bit in your life. I'm about to move mightily. Anybody need a mightily move of God? Does anybody need God to show up? Philistines one after another 
Because God doesn't need a lot of extra stuff. God didn't need the right sword, the right song, the right... You don't have to have the right suit, right tie, right dress, right hair. Do. All you got to say is, just give me a weapon of any time. Because the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the, to the falling down of soul, if you got strong hearts, you got to pray. Pick up. 
with that job. Well, it doesn't have any use for me anymore. I don't need victory. I'm not in a crisis. I'm not broke. Everything's going well. I got a nice car and a nice house now. Yeah, pick up that job. Over. Doesn't seem like it's useful. And God says, yeah, but it was useful when you needed it. And the Bible says God claimed a hollow place that was already in the job. Because saying to God, minister, child of God, what you need is in what you already have. Well, I need something else, Pastor. I need another program. I need another counseling session. No! What brought you victory? What brought your family out of the world? What brought you out of sin? Is the very thing that God's going to use to bring revival and bring refreshing and bring renewal. Throw your hands in the air and let's pray. I'm done preaching right here. Come on. Somebody lift up your voice. Come on. In prayer, God's your victory. Prayer will give you refreshing. In worship, God's your victory. Worship will give you refreshing. Somebody pray. Go. 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 Somebody pray. Go. Oh. 